This is fantastic. We are about four meetings in to the book of Revelation. And we are realizing that this is going to be a long-term project. Mm -hmm. our, our goal, of course, has been to move through the book. In fact, we could have called this moving through the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's salvation in symbols and signs, or revelation simplified. You know, this, there's just so much here. And, mm -hmm. and I think, Jason, you were mentioning uh, that you might have, have your ARRP card by the time, <laughs> by the time we get through it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be retired and a, and a grandpa. <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and that's good. <laughs> I'm there already. Yeah. No, that's good because our goal is not to rush through the book. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to go through it systematically, verse by verse, point by point, um, truth by truth, so that so that our viewers can really get a grasp of the book of Revelation. So that we can really get a grasp of the book mm -hmm. of Revelation. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but even though I've studied this book for over 30 years, I've been learning things as we've been going through this that I didn't know before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of our goal. We're, yeah. We want to be open for the Holy Spirit to actually teach us while we're going through the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thought it would be really good. We've gone through four meetings so far. We've done an overview. We've done an introduction. Uh, we've looked at the sanctuary symbolism. Uh, we've looked at uh, Jesus first and th some of the themes and some of the tools, if you will, to the book. Uh, you know, when we buy stuff, when I go to Ikea, I buy a bookshelf or, you know, a piece of furniture. When I get it home in the box, I'll take out the instructions, and the instructions will say, here are the tools you're going to need to put this together. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a screwdriver, you're going to need a hammer, et cetera. You know how it is. And, you know, sometimes, guys, I don't know why it is, what it is about us, but sometimes we just want to put that thing together and not worry about the tools. You know, we just want to figure it out. Not even <laughs> worry about the instructions. Even, yeah. I know. You know? I know. That's true. And I'll tell you what. I've learned over the years, it may take a little time to read those instructions and get those tools together, but it's a lot faster mm -hmm. and you get it done right. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal for this book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. We want to jump in and we want to just kind of figure it out. No, we need to look at the instructions and mm -hmm. to look at the tool, use the tools that God has given us. Right. And so we're laying out these tools. These tools are basically principles that help us to understand how the book is laid out. Okay. And we've, we've touched on a number of those principles. So let's, let's just start, open up here with a word of prayer and then as we, as we get into the book, let's review, let's recap for us and, and those listening, let's recap what we've learned so far. Yvonne, would you like to pray for us? Sure, sure. Father God, what a privilege it is to come before you, the creator of the universe, the divine designer, our friend, and we can lay everything at your feet. And right now, we're asking you to be in this conversation, to let your spirit who is responsible for guiding us into all truth. Let your spirit be with us. Let your anointing be here, Lord, your presence be felt. And help us, Lord God, as we move through the book, help us to understand, comprehend, and to be able to apply what we learn. Thank you again for all that you do and for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ivor, I'm thinking about this. Uh, tell me what you think. We have a lot more experience in Revelation and perhaps we'll remember more of these things because you know we've studied them more so I'm thinking we should let these guys go first mm -hmm. like what do you guys remember and then we can fill in the gaps what do you think yeah I think it's a good idea okay you know just before we do that um you were talking about the tools and how mm -hmm. we often like to skip the tools and just try to put it together um, but there is the the other problem of asking someone else to put it together for us. Mm. 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 You know, hey, I don't even know, you do it, you're the expert. Mm -hmm. um, people will often come to the book of Revelation looking for someone else to put it together mm -hmm. for mm. them. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do on this program is give you um, the tools and the confidence to know Amen. that if you have the right tools and you have the right principles, mm -hmm. um, you don't need an expert. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look at the, at the, at the framework mm -hmm. and say, yeah, this goes here, this goes here. Mm -hmm. And it empowers you, you know, as a student of the Word of God to be able to understand your conclusions Amen. Mm -hmm. and to know that they make sense and to know that, yeah, I'm not off in you know, left field somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this looks accurate. So, yeah, I... I uh, absolutely think it's a great idea mm -hmm. that, you know, as you were going through this, you guys can recap and say, hey, listen, this is, you know, am I right or, or am I wrong on this? this? These are the principles that we've learned, and uh, this is how we, we learn to apply it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. let's, let's go ahead. 
here with you guys. Now you're in the hot, you in the hot seat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now, no now pressure. with with that, correct me if I'm wrong when I'm going over this mm -hmm. stuff. So that, sure, yeah. sure. Because all right, so we we learned about some really important numbers. Okay. Um, the number three uh, represents like life and death. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You have the number four, which is inclusive of all the people on Earth, world worldwide, the North East. South, uh, north, west. south, east, and west mm -hmm. uh, type of thing. Good. Um, the number 12 represents God's kingdom, um, Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. um, then we have the number seven, which represents a complete cycle of time. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a there's a lot of a lot of numbers. Mm -hmm. you know? I know there's mm -hmm. 144,000 and mm -hmm. 2,300 day, mm -hmm. yes. which I'm sure we'll touch on. Mm -hmm. um, but those are some of the things that I I remember. Yeah, those that's great. Those are really key to understanding some of the things that are taking place. Mm -hmm. Those the understanding of those numbers because again the book is symbolic and the numbers. Uh, represent more than just numerical value. They, right. they have a symbolic representation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that really stuck out with me is the whole idea of the sanctuary symbolism mm -hmm. because I had not, in my reading uh, previously, that had not, I had not connected with that. Mm -hmm. So that's really juicy for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. because it kind of gives me again, a framework for the overview. If you have that overview, mm -hmm. that framework, that, that outlining of principles like repeat and enlarge, mm -hmm. you know, you can then navigate mm -hmm. through the book and kind of know how to apply that as mm -hmm. you navigate. And what you just said was really important, Pastor Iver, about um, being able to do this on your own, not mm -hmm. looking to, to you guys necessarily mm -hmm to be our experts, even though you are, you're giving us the tools that mm -hmm. we need to study this on our own. God, God gave us minds. So, you know, we are to use the intellect and intelligence that we have mm -hmm. to learn. Amen. Right. We're getting the tools from you mm -hmm. and then we take those tools and apply it. So that's really important. With the sanctuary, I made some notes. Um, you know, the way the sanctuary was laid out, you had the outer court, you had the holy place and mo most mm -hmm. holy place, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you have the altar of sacrifice and the laver. The altar of sacrifice and the laver, um, the altar of sacrifice rep with represents the lamb, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right? And then the laver is the purification. So it's actually forgiveness and purification right. mm -hmm. represented in those two areas mm -hmm. in the sanctuary. And then We've got in the holy place, the table of showbread, the altar of incense, mm -hmm. the candlestick, uh, and I can't even read my own writing. Oh. And it says, uh, <laughs> how, and so those three things are how God sustains the repentant mm -hmm. sinner. Mm -hmm. So all of these things we can find represented mm -hmm. in Revelation, right. which I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things that you said, mm -hmm. Pastor James, that was so good for me was that whole pre and post 1844 mm -hmm. interpretation. Mm -hmm. and, and I had never seen that mm -hmm. either. So if the altar of sacrifice is mentioned, then we know that that's pre 1844. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So all of that I never knew that before. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. so great for me because mm -hmm. I, I love learning all that stuff. So that um, plus the numbers that Jay mentioned, uh, th those things are really important. And then the whole repeat and enlarge thing. Mm -hmm. You're going to see it here, then you're going to see it here with a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to see it here with a little bit more mm -hmm. detail. And so you're seeing the divine designer yes. in action. Mm -hmm. You're seeing how he just, just broadens this whole thing mm -hmm. and he's making sure that we know it. And the last thing, you guys shouldn't have given me the floor, right? <laughs> Go and, for it. And, Come on. And the last the more you say, the less we have to. Yeah. <laughs> is the whole, which for me, as being like the romantic person that mm -hmm. I am, the love story mm -hmm. that Jesus mm -hmm. loves us so much mm -hmm. that he would put in this book how he's going to protect, provide, and profess mm -hmm. his love, yeah. which is us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to me, Thinking that Revelation now is a love story, mm -hmm. 
That's mm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Divine romance. Divine romance. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's another title we could announce. <laughs> the divine, <laughs> divine romance. Divine romance. Divine romance. I just want to touch on this, Yvonne, since you brought it up, so so that we can all be really clear on the language. There's there's th the language itself is found in Revelation chapter 21. Uh, it says here in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, mm. the Lamb's wife. Mm. Mm. There's the, the language is explicit. Yes. It's not just symbolic, it's explicit. Yes. And so you have this, these, these seven letters to the churches. These are love letters. Yes. In fact, the last letter he says, you know, as many as I love. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all the way through, you have Jesus Christ wooing and calling. The book of Revelation could be summarized in that sense by John 12, 32. I, if I be lifted up, will draw mm -hmm. all unto me. Mm -hmm. He's knocking on the door. Yes. He's throwing the little pebbles at the window. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah, yeah. He's beckoning, beckoning, yes. beckoning. Come, come, follow me, follow me, follow me. And finally, there's a group of people that follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Yeah. They don't love their lives. and They've fallen in love yeah. with Jesus. Uh -huh. yeah. And they, and they, and this is manifest in Revelation 12, 17 and Revelation 14, 12 by two verses that indicate that there's a people who keep the commandments of God. All right. Now, if you compare that with John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 15, you'll find what Jesus says there, if you love me, mm -hmm. keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. They've fallen in love with you. The fact that they keep the commandments of God <coughs> indicates they've fallen in love with Jesus. Yes. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, prior to that time, there are a number of, I would say, religious experiences that we have, that others have, that, that the world has, that keep the commandments of God out of obligation. The Jews kept the commandments of God out of obligation. The, not all of them, but the, many of them that, that turned from Christ and crucified Christ, they still kept the commandments. They wanted to keep the Sabbath, but it was obviously out of obligation. They hadn't fallen in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. They hadn't fallen in love with God. Mm -hmm. But here's the people who are going to fall in love, so in love with Him that, well, if you love me, they're going to keep His commandments. Mm -hmm. So that love story theme is just beautiful, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate, um, mm -hmm. you know, as we talked about that, Ivor kind of brought this out, and I said, I knew that words were there. You know, I, oh, the bride, the bride, you know. Yeah. But as he, it's it's the theme. It's a theme. It's a tool. Yeah. You know, we. It's the yeah. tape measure. It's the hammer. It's the screwdriver. Whatever it is. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's yeah. a theme. I thought, whoa, we really have to nail that because that yeah. is powerful. That's powerful. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. Any any more that you guys can remember? Anything else you can remember before we add a few to it? Mm -hmm. uh, just that there's pretty much like a checks checks and balances type system. So, yes. hmm. like you were saying, you can realize. You can find out whether or not you're in left field or if, if what you're learning is, is correct and, and true and you can test it and mm -hmm. prove it. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Love it. Sounds good. It's rich. Good. This is some rich stuff Same right day. here. It is. And, and I'm thankful because, uh, again, it's giving me a different feel for mm -hmm. the book because mm -hmm. it actually, I, I mean, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels this way. You know, I've read it, but I'm like, I'm just reading through it, just like reading it, just not, mm -hmm. not connecting the dots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what you are telling us is helping to connect the dots. Amen. Yeah. So Amen. Praise God. Yeah. All right. So another principle I think is important for us to look at too is Jesus first. We mm -hmm. talked about that, mm -hmm. mentioned it, but it's in the book of Revelation, it is clear that Christ is the first thing that John is shown. The first mm -hmm. person that John is, the first vision that John is shown is a vision of Christ. Yes. And the first message that John is given is a message of Christ's love. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the gospel in Revelation 1 verse 5, from him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Mm -hmm. And it's the vision of Christ amidst in among the candlesticks that John is first. He's not shown a vision of the dragon or the beast mm. or the horses. Mm -hmm. Any, he's shown a vision of Christ. Mm. Yeah. And you know, we talked about the words of that uh, hymn, Anywhere with Jesus, yes, I, I can yes. safely, safely go. go. Mm -hmm. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Mm -hmm. And so that's the point. The point is, is the book of Revelation introduces us to the one who displaces all fear. Because Jesus, God, is love. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, 
that love casts out all fear. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we want that love that will cast out all that fear. So mm -hmm. Jesus first is another principle. Yep. If you're studying the book of Revelation, look for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look for him first. And he's going to be able to guide you. As you focus on him, he'll be able to guide you. Mm -hmm. And it's not usually presented that way. It's no. usually yeah. the beast, the leopard, and the mm -hmm. spots, and <laughs> all, all this other stuff. But yeah. it's not usually presented in that. Which is there, but it's in chapter 13. Uh -huh. And yeah. many times we want to jump in. Now, when I was, I have talked about this in his experience when I was a teenager and I was raised you know in as a Christian uh, I said my prayers every night whether I was drunk or sober but I didn't have a <laughs> relationship with God uh -huh. but I was interested in Revelation and we watched the same movies about you know all the stuff and what the 666 is and I remember when we would you know be partying and we'd open up the book of you know talk about Revelation 13 666. Mm -hmm. So in our minds, Revelation 13, 666. Revelation, yeah. that, what, Jesus? Uh, yeah. uh. Jesus? And, no, no, no. Revelation 13, 666. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's yeah, it. Yeah. That's the book of Revelation. Yeah. Yeah. It's all scary stuff. So we miss the first half of the book many times. And, and God, I believe, understands that the world itself and we as individuals are attracted by the idea of, mm -hmm. you know, all of the mystery and the number. And so it's there to attract us. Right. Mm -hmm. Most people that you'll talk to, if, if you're out doing door-to-door -door work and, and you have two books and one says, you know, Steps to Christ, the other one says The Mark of the Beast. Oh, give me that book on The Mark of the Beast. Uh -huh. I want to know about The Mark of the Beast. Uh -huh. See, a lot of people, are, that's so God allows that because He knows that will get our interest. But lo and behold, what do you know? Here's a book about The Mark of the Beast that actually starts with Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, what do you know about that? Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think we want to be, is we yeah. want to be starting where God starts. Mm -hmm. God starts with Christ and we want to start with Christ. Now you, uh, oh, oh sorry, oh, um, you guys talked about tools and having the tools and reading the instructions beforehand. People might be wondering like what, just like how you have coursework, right? You're in college, there's certain prerequisites you have to take before you get into your major. So what are the, the prerequisites for reading the book of Revelation and understanding the book of Revelation? Yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say, um, First of all, the book of Daniel mm -hmm. and Revelation go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daniel was written first for a reason. Um, you know, the, the book of Revelation is based upon the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be covering Daniel uh, in this series as, as well, or you know, mm -hmm. in this program as well, mm -hmm. um, a little bit further down the road. But um, understanding the Old Testament in general, the book of Revelation is the consummation of all the books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from the book of Revelation, you're going to find um, ideas and, and themes that were woven throughout the entire scripture, mm -hmm. which, you know, almost sounds kind of daunting. You may not have to study the whole Bible in order to get yeah. to the book of Revelation. <laughs> yep, that's the but, prerequisite. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be a student of the Bible. Yeah, in reality, um, it's, this is how I like to compare it. Um, uh, Imagine in your, I don't know if you ever uh, played the game called Concentration when I was a child. Oh, yeah. You know, you have the cards and you, you all the cards are mm -hmm. facing down and then you flip a card and you have to find the match, right, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere else. And so as you're going through the game, you have to remember, man, where was that five? Where right. was that three? Mm -hmm. And when you find a match, you're like, ah, oh, I got it. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation is much like that compared to the whole Bible. So as we're reading these stories in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. you're going to find themes mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation, and you're, where, where have I seen this before? Mm -hmm. Something like it. Mm -hmm. And when you can identify those pictures and make a match, you get excited. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, look. So the key thing is you have to have those pictures in your mind, mm -hmm. right? You have, to have those, you have to have those pictures. You have to be familiar with those stories. Mm -hmm. uh, of the Old Testament. Um, so, for example, in, in the book of Revelation, there's a story about three unclean, there's a, a, a particular verse about three unclean spirits like, uh, come out of, like frogs coming out of the mouth of the beast, dragging the false prophet. Where have I heard about frogs before? Mm. Oh, you know what? I've heard about frogs before in the story of the, plague uh, the of plagues Egypt. of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So now I want to go back there to see, does the story of the plagues of Egypt give me any insight mm -hmm. mm. into the frogs in Revelation chapter 16? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So the more we're able to do things like that, right, that's the basis mm -hmm. for which uh, those are the, the, you know, we talked about the tools and then, you know, if you're putting a bike together, you got the tires, you got the, you know, all the different parts 
for the bike, the different parts for the book of Revelation are in the other books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once we can get those ideas and bring them together, that is the prerequisite to understand in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's powerful. And we mm -hmm. see that over and over again. When we get into the churches, we'll read about, for example, Balaam. We'll read about mm -hmm. Jezebel. And that's yeah. why it helps us because we recognize that these are Old Testament uh, illusions or illustrations. These are Old Testament characters that have been brought into the book of Revelation. They're not literal people now in the literal churches that are mentioned here. These are illusions to people whose story in, uh, inform us about what's going on in the history of these churches. Mm -hmm. And so you go back to the story, you garner what's going on in that story, you bring it back now to the history of the church, you, you see where it fits in our Christian history, and you say, oh yes, okay, that's where mm -hmm. we're at. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see this over and over again in the book of Revelation, because primarily the book of Revelation is a revelation of history. Mm. It's the story of the world. It's the story of the church in the world. It's the story of how the world tries to encroach upon the church. It's the story about how Jesus rescues <coughs> his bride from the world, mm -hmm. protects her, woos her, you know, and finally, you know, um, purifies her, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 is really our goal. A lot of times when we talk about the book of Revelation, we jump, you know, and think about Revelation chapter 13, but I want you to look at Revelation 12, verse 1, because we were alluding to the words in Revelation, for example, 21, that talk about the bride making herself ready. Well, Revelation 12, 1 says, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. This is the bride right here. This woman mm. is the bride right here. She's clothed in white. She's clothed in the sun, the white righteousness of Jesus Christ, according to uh, Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. And this is our goal. Once we get to this goal, we've arrived. We're, we're where God wants us to be. And then the dragon is let loose. Mm. See, it's not until Revelation 12 that we see the dragon let loose. Mm -hmm. The dragon, we get his history. We understand what he's all about. And what is he trying to do? Well, he's trying to woo that woman who has been prepared for Christ. He's trying to woo that woman away, <coughs> just like he did in Eden. That's why in, in, in the context of Revelation 12, he's called the serpent. Yeah. Ah. So he wooed her away in the garden, and now he's getting another chance in the end of time. I think something else that, um, think about this theme of, uh, of uh, the love story. In uh, Revelation 17 and 18, um, what you have there is the harlot. And I like to call her uh, the devil's girlfriend. Mm. So here you have the devil's girlfriend, right, trying to turn the world against the true bride of Christ. Mm. Mm. And in fact, you know, you, you should be aware of the company that you hang out with. Devil's girlfriend is trying to, you know, tell the true church, you don't need a man. Mm. You know, uh, you don't need Christ in your life. In other words, she is trying, the devil sends his girlfriend out to try to corrupt mm. the bride of Christ. Mm. Mm. Every story in the book of Revelation, as you, every chapter in the book of Revelation, as you look at it in the context of a love story, mm. as you look at it in the context of the, 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 the stories given in the Old Testament, you begin to see pictures emerging that reveal divine things. Mm -hmm. Right? Again, the book is not just thrown together and, okay, this chapter is talking about this and, the, and everything is disconnected. Right. Everything is connected, revealing an amazing story. Mm -hmm. You know, a story that Hollywood couldn't even put together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and in fact, Hollywood usually lifts its stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, understanding these themes, and in fact, um, you know, in the, in the book of 1 Corinthians, it says the things that were written aforetime were mm -hmm. written uh, for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. The book of Revelation is really a revelation of a repeat of history. Mm -hmm. mm. There's so many things repeated in the history of Israel in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. in New Testament Israel, in spiritual Israel. So understanding the history of Israel, you know, them being upon the borders of the promised land, gives us an insight of, you know, where we are and what the devil is going to try to bring at us as we are upon the borders of the heavenly promised land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so understanding these things again really helped to, to crystallize and you know, bring together the book of Revelation in a, in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. And as Ivor and I were talking yesterday, he was sharing with me that also it's in a sense, the book of Revelation is an outline of a repeating of the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you see Christ in his life walking through these different 
areas of you know growing up as a child, being baptized, going out into the wilderness, being led out into the wilderness. In Revelation 12, we see the woman led out into the wilderness. Uh, we see the church anointed with the Holy Spirit. Christ was anointed with the Holy Spirit. We see the woman being tempted to be unfaithful to God. The, the hour of temptation that come up, comes upon the whole world, the mark of the beast is enforced, that's that pull. The, and so we see all of this in the life of Christ is, 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 uh, is a picture, if you will, of the experience of God's people because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm. And so when Christ comes into us and we live the life he wants us to live, the devil comes against us the same way the devil came against Christ. There's nothing new under the sun. He has no new schemes. He just comes, you know, in these different angles, but right. it's the same basic history that we see repeated right. all over again. Yeah. Well, we have run out of time again, yeah. and I'm thinking, you know, as we move through this, that there's going to be people uh, listening who are going to have questions, uh, and we want to encourage questions. I, that's why I think it's so good that we're all here together, because we even on the set, we're having these, you know, different questions that are coming up. Hey, what yeah. about this? What about that? And this is a very informal very casual study. It's, it's not, we don't have an agenda, we gotta get through this and this and this. Right. And so I'm thinking it'd be, we wanna encourage people <coughs> to send in their questions. Yeah, and they should send them to SSS, as in salvation and symbols and signs. Okay. SSS at 3ABN.org. SSS at 3ABN.org. Mm -hmm. And we will take questions mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll try to answer them. We'll, we'll, we'll throw them out there. And, and we want video questions. Yes. <laughs> oh, video questions <laughs> that we yeah, can put up. That we can put up. Oh, that would be monitor. so, that would be yeah. super. And yeah. they'll just, yeah. you know, and they'll Anyone be can do video us. questions now, right? That's we'll right. Take and, your phone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. ask the question and send it to, uh, forward it to us, SSS at 3ABN.org. Yeah, that's a good and idea. By submitting it, they agree to uh, be on TV. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you'd be on worldwide three uh, television. Uh, 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 Put your face up in there. Yeah, then they can include their email address so we can send them a release form, that kind of thing. Okay. But okay. Um, if they just send it to us, then we can, you know, address Hear it. Because uh, as things come up, yep. people are going to have questions, so we need mm -hmm. to be able to address those. Okay. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Sounds amen. Good to me. Ivor closes out with prayer. Yeah, let's do it. Heavenly Father, uh, we are so thankful that you are giving us the opportunity, Lord, to open your word, to go through it, to understand the tools and the principles and the laws that govern your word. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that you would continue to guide us in our study. We pray that you will continue to open our eyes and give us new revelations of your glory and character. And we thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer because we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.